Hello everyone, this is Vai Manoharadi, Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, in this session, I am going to discuss about the concept of shadow paging. Shadow paging. By understanding of this topic, uh, students are going to know about the recovery techniques in the transaction management. So, there are different types of recovery uh, techniques in the concept of transaction management. So, this is one of the technique that they are going to know the concept of shadow paging for the recovery of the transaction management. So, to understanding that concept of uh, shadow paging in uh, transaction management, so we have to understand that the storage, storage structure of storage structure of DBMS that is nothing but a storage system in DBMS. Storage structure of DBMS or storage system in DBMS. So, we have to we must should uh, know about this topic. So, if you want to understanding about the demand page concept, you should understanding this all the memory concept that, that is called a storage system in DBMS. So, what is meant by storage system? What is meant by structure? How that all uh, the data is going to be structured in the memory? So, we will see. So, storage structure in DBMS. Storage structure in DBMS or system in DBMS. So, a database system provides an ultimate view of the stored data. That means, it provides a view how the users are going to see the data. So, that is the ultimate view of the stored data in the level of view level. So, we have a different types of levels, the so physical level, logical level, view level. So, how the data is going to be seen by the user, how they are going to view the data. And the data in the form of bits or bytes get stored in different storage devices. So, the data is going to be stored in the different types of storage devices in the form of bits or bytes, in the form of bits or bytes. So, here what we are going to see here, various types of storage devices that are used for accessing and storing the data. So, various devices that are used for accessing and storing the data. So, from this point of view, we are going to understand that uh, different types of storage devices for to store in the data. So, to access the data and how you are going to store the data in the different types of storage devices. So, there are a lot of storage devices out there. So, the types of data storage device. So, for storing the data, there are different types of storage options are available. There are different types of storage options are available. We know that, uh, that there is a memory card, we know that that is a pen drive, that is a CD, that is a DVD, that is a hard disk, we know. But uh, technically, how we are calling them as a storage device? How we are calling them as storage device? So, we will see here. So, for storing the data, there are different types of storage options are available actually. These storage types are different from one another as per their speed and accessibility. So, based on the speed of the accessing the data and the accessibility of the storage device, there are different types of storage devices are there. So, there are the following types of storage devices used for storing the data. One is primary storage and the second one is secondary storage and third one is tertiary storage. So, first one is primary storage, secondary, secondary storage and third one tertiary storage. So, first one primary storage. So, it is the primary area that offers a quick access to the stored data. So, the primary area that offers that quick access to the stored data. So, wherever the data is stored, that is accessed by uh, user very fastly, very fastly or quick you can access. We also know the primary as a volatile storage. So, we also know that the primary storage is as a volatile storage. So, primary storage is also called as volatile storage that is nothing but temporary storage that is nothing but temporary storage it is because this type of memory does not permanently store the data so that means it specifies that it identifies that that memory does not permanently stores the data as soon as the system leads to a power cut or a crash the data also get lost as soon as the system gets uh, the system leads to power cut or crashes so, due to the any failures of the system or uh, data, you uh, you lose entire the data. You lose entire the data. So, main memory and cache are the types of primary storage devices. So, examples of primary storage are one is the main memory, one is the main memory, and the second one is 
the catchy memory second one is catchy memory so these two are the primary storage devices we can say that those two are going to be access the data very fast and the storage is a volatile storage that is nothing but a permanent not a permanent storage it is a temporary storage device so the first one is main memory first one is main memory it is responsible for operating the data that is available by the storage medium so it is responsible for operating the data that is available by the storage medium that means you are uh, storing the data and uh, it is responsible for operating the data so operating is nothing but functioning the data so when you want to perform some processes perform some pro functions this main memory is used to functioning the data functioning the processes and the main memory handles each instruction of a computer machine so the main memory is responsible for always running of the machines or running of the instructions or functioning of the instructions only so this type of memory can store gigabytes of the data on a system but it is small enough to carry the entire database so it it is used to run the function or run the functioning of the database but actually but it is small enough to carry the entire database so that that functioning of the data is leads to the entire database is, it is going to be stored that small function of the data is going to be leads to the entire database at last the main memory loses the whole content if the system shut down because of the power failure or other reasons so because of the uh, power failure or system crashes of any reasons the main memory loses the whole content the main memory loses the whole contents so from this point of view we have to understand that only one thing the main memory is used for functioning of all the data which leads to the entire database which leads to the entire database right and the next one cache memory cache memory so it is one of the costly storage media it is one of the costly storage media on the other hand it is the fastest one on the other hand it is the fastest one akachi is a tiny storage media which is maintained by the computer hardware usually so all the all the predefined predefined functional data which are going to be stored at particular place or area that is called as a cache area so that is nothing but a tiny storage media we can say that it is a, a small storage media and while designing the algorithms and query processors for the data structures the designers keep concern on the cache effects so while they are designing for the processors or data structures or designers keep the uh, concerns of cache effects they are going to maintain some cache effects so this is always remember that this is always remember that to uh, retrieve the instructions very fastly or to fetch the instructions very fastly from this cache storage area that is the cache memory so it maintains all the history of the data or it, it maintains all the cache of the data so that whenever the users wants to access any data that data is referred by from uh, referred from cache memory the data is referred from cache memory itself so that the user can access the data is very fast rather than secondary storage devices and the second part is secondary storage second part secondary storage so secondary storage is also called as online storage it is the storage area that allows the users to save and store data permanently so this is a online storage we can say that it is a online storage or it is say that it is a permanently stored device also it is a permanent stored data or permanent stored device and it is the storage area that allows users to save and store the data permanently so save you can save the data permanently and you can store the data permanently and this type of memory does not lose the data due to any power failure or system crashes because always we are keeping it to save always we are keeping it to save so that the data will never get lost the data will never get lost the data is also uh, stored in the permanent way so that's why we also call it as non volatile storage that's why we also call it as non volatile storage that means uh, permanently stored device permanently stored data we can say that in it way and in this one example flash memory so a flash memory is nothing but it is a type of usb it is a type of usb so a flash memory stores data in usb format usb keys 
which are further plugged into the USB slots, which are further plugged into the USB slots. So, like examples, you can take uh, like printers of a computer system. These USB keys help transfer data to your computer system. So, with the help of the pen drives, uh, with the help of the uh, USB devices, you are going to transfer the data from secondary storage to primary storage or primary storage to secondary storage. And third one, magnetic disk storage. Magnetic disk storage. So this type of storage media is also known as online storage media. It is also say that it is an online storage area. A magnetic disk is used to storing the data for a long time. So you have to use this uh, type of storage device for storing the data for the long time. So it is capable of storing the an entire database. It is capable of storing an entire database. So there is a not a restrictions for storing uh, such type of data or such limit of the data. You can I can buy it a different types of versions or different types of sizes of the data uh, storage devices so that you can keep all the data into the devices. And next one tertiary storage tertiary storage. So it is the storage type that is external from the computer system. It is a storage type that is external from this computer system. It has the slowest speed actually. It has the slowest speed actually. But it is a capable of storing a large amount of data. But it is a capable of storing a large amount of data. And it is also known as offline storage. And it is also known as offline storage. So we will take an example optical storage, tape storage, some more. So an optical storage can store megabytes or gigabytes of data. That is nothing but MB or GB of the data. So a CD can store a 700 megabytes of a data with a play time of around 80 minutes. With a play time of around 80 minutes. So you can take uh, CDs or DVDs. They are uh, compatible with the read options as well as write options. Some of the CDs and DVDs are compatible with the read and writable options. Some of the CDs and DVDs are may not compatible with these both options. And the tape storage, it is the cheapest storage medium in the disk than disks. Generally, tapes are used for achieving or back up the data, backing up the data. It provides a slow access, it provides a slow access to data as it accesses the data sequentially from the start. So it provides a slow access to the data and it is used for achieving or taking up backups for the data. So this is about the secondary storage devices. Secondary storage devices under tertiary storage devices. So from this all the concept of you, we have to understand that only thing is what the storage devices are used to save the data or store the data. Some of the, some of they are doing that uh, functioning of the data and some of them are doing that uh, storing or saving the data. So we can say that main memory is always functioning of the data which leads to the entire database. But uh, secondary storage devices are used to keep the stored data, keep the data is to be stored permanently or keep the data is to be saved permanently. So we'll, uh, we'll see here the storage hierarchy level. So various other storage devices reside in the computer system. These storage media are organized on the basis of data accessing speed. So all the data, all the storage devices are organized in the computer machine based on their data accessing speed as well as cost per unit of the data cost per unit of the data. So by the medium and by medium's reliability also. By medium's reliability also. Thus we can create a hierarchy of storage media on the basis of its cost and speed. So based on the cost and speed, we are uh, providing a hierarchy level of the storage devices. So thus an arranging of the above described storage media in a hierarchy according to its speed and cost. We conclude that below described image, below described image. So, in this level, in this storage device hierarchy, you can say that catchy memory, main memory is two are the primary memories devices, primary memory, primary memory, and a flash memory, magnetic disk, or secondary memories, secondary storage memories. And optical disks, magnetic tips are magnetic tapes are tertiary storage devices. Tertiary storage devices. So, meanwhile, when we are seeing this diagram, we can say that the level of catchy memory and main memory is to very effective to accessing the speed very fast 
as well as the cost of the memories are also high so accessing the speed is also cost accessing the speed is also high and uh, the cost of uh, memory also high while comparing to this one these two are high cost high cost as well as high speed for accessing high speed for accessing high speed for accessing so these two are mainly for mainly meant for accessing the speed accessing the speed and uh, accessing the speed of the data and storing the data so mainly they are two for uh, functioning of the data in the dbms functioning of the data in the entire database system not only in the dbms entire database systems entire all the data and these four are meant for only for the low cost and saved data to be permanently saved data to be permanently which are which are non volatiles which are non volatiles so they can uh, they can store permanently of the data so this is about a storage device hierarchy so from this concept from this concept shadow parsing we understood that the previous concept is memory hierarchy so all the memory concept is uh, depending upon only the in data is stored in the memory devices data is stored in the memory devices whether it is permanently or stored permanently stored or temporarily stored permanently stored or temporarily stored but the concept is the processing of all the memory leads to store all the database processing of the memory is leads to storing all the data in the database so here shadow paging in dbms so what is meant by shadow paging actually so we understood that shadow paging is also one recovery technique of the transaction management which provides which satisfies this atomicity and durability properties which provides and which satisfies atomicity and durability properties atomicity and durability properties so in dbms system it does not require the use of log in a single user environment so if you have single user environment that only one user can access that database there is a not required of use of logs however a multi user environment requires a log for concurrency control multi user environment uh, logs for uh, concurrency control so from this point of view what we have to understand that the single user environment is no need to no need to use the concept of logs but the multi user environment is required logs for the concurrency control techniques concurrency control techniques so shadow paging is one of the concurrency control technique that we have to understand from this point of view so shadow paging is one recovery technique of the transaction management with the satisfying properties atomicity and durability properties and this is a one of the concurrency control technique so actually what is meant by shadow paging so so it maintains two page tables it maintains two page tables one is current page table and the second one is a shadow page table one is current page table and the second one is shadow page table so when a transaction begins when the transaction begins all the entries of the current page table are copied into the shadow page table so whenever the transaction begins all the properties or all the entries of the current page table to the shadow page table they are copied all the entries into the shadow page table in simple words the ith entry of the current page table and the shadow page table points to the same address of the data that means indirectly we are understanding that the current page table entries are going to be stored in the shadow page table means it indirectly points to the shadow page table or it indirectly addressing to the shadow page table so when a page is to be modified a new page that is the copy of the page is to be modified is written somewhere else in the memory and that is modified so that means uh, we understand that the current page table and the shadow page table the shadow page table is going to be modified that all the modified content is going to be stored in the shadow page table all the content of the modified table in the uh, modified contents in the shadow page table only the new entries are uh, allotted into the current page table current page table so the old copy of the page is not modified so old copy of the page is not modified so after modifying only it is going to be stored in the shadow page table and the new page is going to be stored in the current page table current page table so the entries of the current page table are modified to 
point to the newly created page. The shadow page table always points to the old unmodified page. The shadow page is always points to the old unmodified page. So in simple words, the old pages are referenced by the shadow page table and the pages that have been modified are referenced by the current page table. So that means we have to understand that the shadow page table maintains old records. The shadow page table maintains old records that have been referenced by this memory and that have been modified modified pages are referenced by the current page table. Modified entries are referenced by the current page table. So this is the current page table which is referenced for modified modified entries and this is the shadow page table referenced for referenced for old page ones. Old records. So this is this is referenced for old records and this is reference for modified records. That is reference for modified records. So this is the concept of uh, paging concept. We understand that the page is loaded into the main memory. This is a main memory. So whenever the transaction is started, whenever the transaction is under executed, the page is going to be loaded into the main memory. The page is going uh, to load into the main memory. So the page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4. These are all the loaded pages, loaded entries also. But uh, among this all, page 3 is modified. Page 3 is modified that is referenced by this current page table. And uh, after all modified pages, all these pages are referenced with shadow page table. Referenced with shadow page table. So, to recover from any failure during the transaction, it is sufficient to free all modified pages and discard the current page table. So, discard the current page. So, that means uh, if you want to recover all the pages, so we should move on to the shadow page table and uh, you can uh, you can leave this current page table. So world unmodified data is available through shadow page table only. So world unmodified, world unmodified data is available through shadow page table. So that is what we understand from this concept, entire concept. So this shadow page table maintains old records and the current page table maintains modified records. So when you want to recover the transaction, when you, are, when you are going to recover the transaction, it is just sufficient to free all the modified pages and discard the current page table. So old unmodified data is available through shadow page table only. So you can uh, take the recovery of the data from shadow page table only. Shadow page table only. So if the transaction is performed successfully, the entries of the shadow page table are discarded and the current page table is again copied to the shadow page table. If the transaction is performed successfully, then the entries of the shadow page table are discarded itself and the current page table is again copied that uh, original results into shadow page table, copied to the shadow page table. So this technique is classified as no under or no redo. No under or no redo techniques. So this is about the concept of shadow paging, shadow paging recovery technique. And uh, what are the different types of recovery techniques uh, with the concurrent transactions actually? So they are all stored in the buffer management or buffer space. So what is meant by the different types of recovery techniques in the current uh, concurrent transactions execution? So concurrency control. So what is meant by concurrency control? It means the multiple transactions can be executed at the same time with having interleaved logs occur. With having interleaved logs occur with an interleaved log sucker. So that means when you are executing multiple transactions or concurrent execution, concurrent transactions or concurrent execution, so that in that point of view, you are going to control that all the concurrent executions. So in that point of view, you are going to con control all the concurrent executions with the help of some techniques. So that uh, techniques are we are going to discuss here, but there may be a changes in the transaction results so maintain the order of execution of those transactions. So recovery with concurrent transactions can be done in the following four ways. So one is the interaction with the concurrency control. First one is interaction with the concurrency control. So interaction with concurrency control protocols. So we have to interact. We have to interact and understand that the concept as concept is going to be used different types of protocols in the concurrency protocol. Different types of protocols applied 
to stop or to avoid the concurrent execution. So in that uh, we will have some different types of protocols. One is lock based concurrency control protocol. One is lock based concurrency control protocol. Second one is time stamp based time stamp based lock protocol. Time stamp based concurrency control protocol. And third one is validated validation based concurrency control protocol. Validation based concurrency control protocol. So these three are the concurrency pr control protocols. We are going to interacting with all the protocols to stop the concurrent executions. Stop the concurrent execution. So in this first one log based protocols. So we can use the locks to acquire the transactions and uh, release the locks for the transaction. So we are using the lock concept here. So to execute the transaction we acquire a lock. After releasing the transaction we release the after executing the transaction we release a lock. So before starting of the transaction we acquire a lock. After starting of the transaction to finishing of the transaction we are using that locks and then after execution of completed then you release the locks. So like the way we can use the different types of lock based protocols like simplest simplistic lock protocol, pre climbing lock protocol, two phase shift locking protocols and strict two phase locking protocols. Like the way we have different types of lock based protocol. But all the lock based protocol helps us to lock the transaction before using it and release the locks after completing the transactions after completing the transactions. So that is the lock based one and the second one timestamp based transactions. So we can use the times for the transactions based on the times only. The younger transactions are going to be wait for some time to execute the older transactions first. So like the way you can assign the timestamps. So read or write timestamps will be there. Based on the read or write values, read or write values, the transactions are going to be executed. And then validation based concurrency control protocol. So validation based protocol, they are using some temporary variables, temporary variables to store the transactions and pass through execution, pass through execution. So these are all the different types of concurrency control protocols. They are interacted with the execution to stop a concurrent execution. And the second one transaction rollback or log recovery. So transaction rollback or log recovery means uh, this is the concept of log based recovery log based recovery. So here we are using the concept of logs. We are using the concept of logs. The logs will be created whenever the transaction is created. The logs will be created whenever the transaction is created. So at the moment the logs are created for the all the transactions to be completed. So for the starting of the transaction one log, updating the transaction one log and the ending of the transaction also one log. So that means all the logs are created once the execution is started and once the transaction is started from the starting of the point of uh, starting of the transactions to be execution of the transaction. And third one checkpoints. So we can use the different types of checkpoints like save points, save points and commit and rollback options. Save point, commit and rollback points. So save points are used to save the workspace to be transaction recovery. So save the points, save points are nothing but they are uh, like a checkpoints where you are stopping or where you are going to uh, at what point of at what point of space, what point of workspace you are going to recover the transaction. So uh, you need to create a checkpoints, you need to create a checkpoints to recover the transactions. So for everyone, suppose you can uh, insert something and uh, you can check one save point. Suppose you are updating some value and create save point 2 and delete one value create save point 3. So among these all the save points you want to retrieve the transaction or you want to recover the transaction for save point 1 or save point 2 or save point 3. So based on that created save points, based on that created checkpoints, you are going to recover the transaction. You are going to recover the transaction. And last restart recovery. So restart recovery is having three options like abort options, terminate options or kill the process, kill the option. So if you want to kill the process then you are not able to recover the transaction. If you want to abort the transaction you maybe have the chance to restart the transaction. Like the way we, ha we have a restart recovery technique also. 
so we will see the first one is what interaction with concurrency protocol so here in this scheme the recovery scheme depends on greatly on the concurrency control scheme in this scheme the recovery scheme depends on greatly on the concurrency control scheme that is used so to roll back a failed transaction we must undo the updates performed by the transactions so we are using a different types of con con concurrency control schemes so that is what we discussed in this last minute so concurrency control protocols they are using as a schemes to control this uh, technique the next transaction roll back so in this scheme we roll back a failed transactions by using the logs by using logs the system scans the log backward a failed transaction for every log record found in the log system restore the data item so for every transactions the logs will be there logs are created and all the logs will be stored in a particular place so whenever the transaction you want to recover then log will be called and the log will be the base for the recovery of the transaction log will be the base for the recovery of the transaction and checkpoints so checkpoints is a process of saving a snapshot that is what we understand so checkpoints is a process of saving a snapshot of the applications state so that it can restart from the point in case of failure so at particular point you are going to create a save point that means up to that you are going to recover the transaction so the checkpoint is used to declare the point before which the dbms was in the consistent state which the dbms was in the consistent state and all the transactions were committed and all the transactions were committed so before creating all the checkpoints all the transactions to be committed and in this scheme we used checkpoints to reduce the number of log records that the system must scan when it recovers from a crash when it recovers from a crash in a concurrent execution concurrent transaction processing system we require that checkpoint log record be of the form like a checkpoint log record and where l is a list of transactions active at the time of the checkpoints active at the time of checkpoint so fog checkpoint is a checkpoint where transactions are allowed to perform updates even while buffer blocks are being written out being written out so that is what we understand from this checkpoints concept and last one restart recovery so when the system recovers from a crash it constructs two lists so one is undo list and the second one is redo list so undo list consists of transactions to be undone and the redo list consists of transactions to be redone so that is undo list consists of transactions to be undone that means the transactions are you are going to recover them and redo list contain uh, consists of transactions to be redone so you have to restart the transactions again so the system constructs the two lists as follows initially they are both empty the system scans the log backward examining the each record until it finds the first checkpoint record so for each and every record each and every log it is going to be checked if it is found then it is uh, able to restart the transaction or recover the transaction until and unless it is not found the logs are not found then you are not able to recover the transaction or restart the transaction so this is what we understand from this concept so once once again we'll see all the concepts what we discussed in this session so one is uh, first one is what types of storage areas so types of storage structure there are different types of storages one is primary memory second one is secondary memory and third one is the tertiary storage or tertiary storage so all this memory concept is only for to access the data or to store the data permanently or temporarily to access the data or to store the data or to save the data permanently or permanently or temporarily so there are different types of there uh, but cache memory and the main memory cache memory both two are more expensive rather than all the other devices because they are accessing speed is very high and the cost is also very high while well, comparing to the secondary storage devices the secondary storage devices are all permanently stored data there is nothing but non volatile storage device and also you can say that online storage devices online storage devices and the third one is tertiary storage devices so tertiary storage also it is a uh, like permanently stored devices with, with having capacity of uh, uh, 700 megabytes of data with play time of around 80 minutes 
of the data so like cds and dvds are available so read writable dvds are rewritable cds are available some of the cds are may not be readable and writable but some of them are readable and writable and you can see all the storage hierarchy from the level of uh, high to low from the level of high to low here cache memory and main memory those two are the high levels of expensive levels high levels are expensive levels you can say that this two those two levels are very fast accessing speed and uh, cost is also high and uh, the concept uh, based on that concepts based on that memory uh, all the process are going to be use the memory concept based on that shadow paging is one of the recovery technique to recover the transactions using a shadow page table or current page table so here we can have two types of pages one is current page table and the second one is a shadow page table so current page table maintains all the current entries that are nothing but new entries which have not been modified which have been modified but the shadow page table maintains all the old entries that have been modified or unmodified so here you can uh, look look into this table so this contains current page table and uh, second one contains shadow page table so this concept is nothing but paging concept we can understand that all the pages are loaded into the main memory all the pages are loaded into the main memory so current page table entries are loaded into the main memory shadow page table entries are loaded into the main memory but all this apart from all this the shadow page table is referenced for shadow page table is referenced for mod uh, not modified that is nothing but older pages entries older page entries but current page table is referred for modified entries current page table is referred for modified entries so that is referred to like this and this is referred like this so from this point of view you can understand that and this is also called as no and or no error option and finally we understand that uh, there are different types of recovery techniques recovery techniques for uh, roll back the transactions or recover the transactions to do not occur concurrent execution so one is the uh, interaction with concurrency protocols interaction with concurrency protocols so we have used different types of log based protocols uh, we can we are using log based protocols time stamp values protocols and uh, validation based protocols and also we can use the concept of log based recovery by maintaining all the logs for every transaction that have been created to uh, executed and uh, the checkpoints also save points uh, commit uh, rollback options also the concept is checkpoints and the restart recovery so restart recovery also one of the technique that uh, that can offer so only two options about our about our uh, kill transactions about our kill transactions if you are aborting in the sense you may have the chance to restart the transactions or recover the transaction so this is the last one restart recovery transaction so up to this all the a concept all the recovery con uh, recovery techniques are used for executing uh, used for recovering the transactions from the transaction management so that is about this concept thank you all like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates